How's it going, y'all? I'm Suboptimal Engineer, and I make videos about tech and productivity. Today, I'm gonna have a low-key video going over the mindset behind my Visual Studio Code setup. This is just a sample project, and I opened it just to give you guys an understanding of how to think about setting up VS Code as a full-stack engineer. And to give you some context, I've been working as a full-stack software engineer myself for a few years now. Throughout this time, I kind of just came across this sort of methodology that I started using just to increase my engineering efficiency. In this video, I won't be going over the nitty gritty details of my setup. I'm not gonna take you through all of my extensions or go over all of my specific Vim key bindings. But what I will do is go over my development mindset and how I set myself up for success with VS Code. So let's get started. The first and most important thing when you're setting up your file structure and how you're using VS Code, specifically as a full stack developer, is to have your files in a front end to back end manner. So why is it important to actually have this sort of structure? Let's think about a sample workflow of a full stack engineer. Say you're given a prompt, like add a button to the website. You're probably gonna start off by, you know, adding the button in the UI itself. Afterwards, you want to make sure that that button does what it's supposed to. So you're going to add a method that is going to hit some sort of endpoint on the front end, which talks to the back end. In my situation, I have stats API, which interfaces from the front end to the back end. It's kind of just like a connection point. So this API, you might need to write a method here and then go to the backend server and write that router so that there's actually something to hit on the backend. And once you write another piece of backend code, then you might have to go to the database and update that. So now the database gets an update over here. And usually that is the workflow of a full stack engineer is you're given a prompt and you start from the front end to the back end, or you start from the back end to the front end. So having this file structure is very helpful in visualizing what you're doing. If my view file was all the way on the right side and my backend file was all the way on the left side, I'll have to like search through these files. Like where's that view file? Oh, right. Dang it. It's all the way on the right side. So I go all the way to the right side. And basically it just adds a level of complexity that you as a full stack engineer don't need. If you just spend that initial time, just structuring your files in this manner from the front end to the back end, you'll save yourself a lot of time on the long run because you won't be thinking like, you know, where's my backend file or where's my front end file? I can't find it because you know, if if you're looking at the front end, you just have to go left. And if you're looking for the back end, you just have to go to the right. And of course, the commands to switch between these files, I had to optimize that because I really hate using like my mouse to switch between files or anything like that. So I just do command K to go to the right file and then command J to go to the left file. Shortcuts, we'll talk about them in another video. So that's the first mindset you should have is always set up your files from front end to back end. So the second thing that you need to keep in mind is going to be understanding Vim commands. Vim commands are essential, not just for full stack developers, but for any sort of developer. Best part about VS code is that you don't need to interface with Vim. Vim is, is hard to learn. It's on the terminal. You have to like go into the Vim RC, set it all up. That gets pretty tedious. And even I don't, I never fully set it up. I found this Vim extension because I started having hand issues. I would move to the, move my hand to the mouse a lot because I'd be copying something or it, it kind of just started wearing and, and tearing my wrists apart. Like my wrists were like starting to break or something. So uh, I knew I had to learn Vim commands, even if it wasn't to speed up my development process, just to save my hands from, from getting all these like random pains because I would like quickly move to the mouse or something. And obviously doing that once or twice is fine. But if you're an engineer and you know, you start moving to the mouse a lot, every time you copy something or anything like that, it, I didn't get it at first, but I got it like, I think a few months into my full-time job. And that's when I took the time and invested in learning Vim. And it has saved me so much time, energy. So in summary, just remember to keep your file structure from front end to back end or from, you know, back end to front end, you know, whatever you like, just having a structure in the way you open these files can save you a lot of mental energy. You don't have to think about where you're going for your front end files or your back end files. And the second thing is Vim commands, Vim commands all the way. They will save you a ton of time in the long run. In fact, you can even uh, search through files like this with Vim commands. If you have them in VS code, it's just a quick little extension. I'll dive deeper into these topics in future videos, but I just wanted to give you this overarching view of how to be a productive full stack engineer with VS Code. So yeah, that's going to be it for today's video. Um, let me know what you guys think, because this is how I try to stay productive and I'm also always trying to improve. So if you guys see any room for improvement for me, or if you guys know some tips and tricks that 
I'm not using right now that I should be using, then please leave them down in the comments below because I'm always looking for cool tips and tricks to make my workflow just like 0.1% better because that saves so much time in the long run. Roast my setup if you think it's really bad and give it a like and subscribe if you you know enjoyed uh, watching the video. That'll be it. I'll catch you guys next time.